Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is about the ultimate home storage setup for streaming massive amounts of data to a household that has lots and lots of PCs. Now I know this setup looks really ridiculous, but most of this is just representative of stuff you would already have in your house if you're a super tech geek like, well, you know, someone like me for example. So over here we have three PCs and a notebook that are going to be streaming media or copying files back and forth on our network. We've also got an older PC that you can repurpose to turn into a server. So we're going to be showing you guys how to spend about a thousand bucks plus storage on a beastly network setup that can handle all the data you could possibly want on the machines in your house all at the same time. So number one is you'll need a couple of PCI Express slots in your older repurposed PC's motherboard or you can, well, you can build a new server as well. In them, you will put an Intel NIC. So we've got a four by one gigabit NIC that supports teaming or link aggregation. So we're gonna get an effective four gigabit per second link between this PC and the rest of my network. You will also need a RAID card. So we've gone with an LSI RAID card. You're gonna to wanna to run in RAID 5 or RAID 6 for data safety. However, to showcase the most extreme possible scenario, we're running seven Seagate Barracuda three terabyte drives in RAID 0 with a 256 gigabyte dedicated SSD cache off of this particular card. Like I said, not really a recommended config, but you know. We're extreme like that. You will also need a smart switch. So we've gone with a Netgear smart switch that's around 200 bucks, which will put us around our target price with the high-end network card, the high-end RAID card, and the high-end switch of around 1,000 bucks in addition to everything else that you've already got. Getting the right storage set up is imperative. So you're gonna wanna choose Seagate drives because they use one terabyte platters in all of their drives these days and they don't have any issues falling out of a RAID like some of their competitors do for some of their drives. So you don't even have to think about it. You buy Barracudas, done. So I wanna show you guys a few different configurations I have here. Here's the RAID 0 we're running today. So you can see we're getting about 900 megs per second writes and reads, which is more than enough to saturate our four gigabit per second network connection. If we configure it in RAID 5, you can see we're still getting very good performance. However, our write performance drops off a fair bit, especially in sequential. This is because RAID 5 requires a calculation in order to write to the drives because one of the drives is being reserved for a parity calculation that gives you redundancy if one of them fails. RAID 6, you see we suffer even more in terms of writes, and that is because RAID 6 does two parity calculations on two disks. So, capacity-wise, RAID 0, you get all the capacity, but if your drives fail, it wipes out your entire array. RAID 5, if one drive fails, you're okay, but you take a bit of a performance hit on writing, which is fine because we're gonna be reading from this media server more than anything else. And RAID 6, you can lose up to two drives, but you lose two drives worth of capacity, and your writes again get slower, but again, it probably doesn't matter that much. So for my personal configuration, I would choose RAID 6 if I have a high end enough RAID card, and I'd choose RAID 5 if I don't. Because we're in RAID 0, we get 21 terabytes of storage space out of our RAID array, which is ridiculous. So remember, it would be 18 with RAID 5, and it would be only 15 with RAID 6, but we'd have that safety. Now we are gonna be using some pretty big files in order to test the max throughput we can get from our server PC. Another thing you might wanna think about adding if you were gonna set something up on your own is a proper server operating system, whether it's Windows Home Server 2011 storage server or a Linux operating system system of some sort. So I want to show you guys a couple things. First is our 13 plus gigabyte MKV files that we're going to be transferring concurrently to four separate machines. Slick's laptop, our other test bench, and two of these little Zotac mini PCs. Because it doesn't necessarily work like this where you just take two computers with quad gigabit cards, connect them through the switch, and you can get a point-to-point -point connection of that speed. It's, it's, more, uh, it's more sensible if you're using it as like a backbone for a bunch of other gigabit devices, that's where you're gonna see the benefit. So if you go to one device, you're still gonna be capped at gigabit speeds, you're just adding more lanes to potentially other devices, and that's how link aggregation works. So you can see we've got our four gigabit per second connection. We have set up the teaming within the Intel properties. So all you have to do is uh, you click add team, and it's really, really simple. Use LAC Peach, LACP, which is link aggregation protocol, um, or link aggregation, something, whatever, don't worry about it, it's called that. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna do the test next, guys. How excited are you?
Now guys, for our test, bear in mind these are bone stock configurations other than configuring teaming. So we haven't enabled jumbo frames or anything like that. We could potentially squeeze more performance out of this setup with some optimizations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our test files and we are going to copy them on all PCs at the same time and see how it goes. Ah, oh, this is PC1 and of course it doesn't, uh, doesn't keep that there for me. There we go, and that wasn't PC1, that was PC2. So that means PC, oh, right, that was PC1. Okay, don't worry about it. The point is, we have four concurrent transfers going, and let's have a look at what kind of speeds we're achieving on all the different computers. So on Slick's notebook, we're getting 105 megabytes per second. On our test bench, we're getting 111 megabytes per second. On Zotac PC1, we are getting 77 megabytes per second, 76, 78. And on Zotac PC1, we are getting 87 megabytes per second. So what does that mean for our overall network utilization? We are extremely efficient, peaking at around, wow, peaking at 50, 60, 70, 80, peaking at around 80% utilization on our quad gigabit connection. Bearing in mind that Link aggregation does not only improve speed, it also gives you failover. So if one of your cables or ports fails at any given time, it'll just automatically scale itself back down to three gigabit, which is uh, pretty darn cool. So can you play back HD files to, I mean, how many computers could you do at this point? To, you know, four plus computers all the same time from your server? Sure, you can even copy files much faster than that and you'll see pretty much no slowdown from one file copy for doing something else concurrently on the network. Pretty beastly. So while this might not seem like the most practical thing in the world for a home user, if you are an extreme home user, or maybe you know someone who, or you have a small or medium business that really needs a storage server and you didn't know where to start, I hope this gave you some ideas because this is kind of the way to do it on, on the cheap, so to speak. It's not, still not cheap, but if we compare our four gigabit solution to 10 gigabit networking equipment, it starts to look pretty compelling. At the time of filming, 10 gigabit network cards can go over $1,000 easily, and they start at around 500 bucks, okay? And then 10 gigabit capable switches start at around $500 to $1,000, plus you're going to need the modules that go into them in order to even support that speed. So, yeah. If you're looking for a way to support huge amounts of data to you know, a fairly limited set of computers or devices, this might be the way to do it. And we couldn't have done it without adequate storage. So don't forget guys, optimal choice. You get 7200 RPM speeds, one terabyte platters, which means the individual drives are extremely fast. Even in our RAID 5 and RAID 6 configurations, we're able to sequentially read and write like one gigabyte per second off of this array. And because of the firmware that Seagate uses, they don't fall out of RAID arrays, whether you're using them in an elaborate setup like this, or whether you're using them in a more simple NAS type environment, or even as a USB drive. Well, no, that's probably not applicable. But any RAID environment, you're gonna wanna go with something like this. So, thumbs up the video if this taught you anything, and if you would consider using a setup like this if you needed extreme network storage, or thumbs down if you thought the whole concept was ridiculous and I should never do an episode like this again. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips. Just for lols, we're running uh, four copies at the same time of our high bitrate MKV file with absolutely, this is running over the network with absolutely no slowdown. So you can see three copies are running now and we're just going to, uh, give it a sec, it's the KVM. There we go. And now we're gonna launch a fourth copy to see if our storage configuration and our network connection can look at that no delay we might as well be running a local copy scan around like this no big deal in fact for our network connection we're not even close to saturating it them geeking out here